interface between experiments and mathematics. That's what I would call theoretical physics. It tries to connect with both mathematics and with experimental physics. RRI has researchers who provide theoretical support to our experimental activities as well as explore the realms of frontiers in theoretical problems that challenge the current scientific understanding of nature. I have been particularly attracted to those areas of physics which involve some kind of geometry or topology and over the years I have worked in several areas of physics, especially in mathematical physics. So my interests are basically non-nuclear systems and in general stochastic processes. I work in the area of classical and quantum gravity. I work in an area which is called quantum gravity. My research area is equilibrium and non-equilibrium statistical mechanics. So quantum gravity is the effort to construct a quantum mechanical description of gravity and therefore it is an effort to construct the quantum mechanics of space-time itself. There are several approaches to quantum gravity. The approach I work on is called loop quantum gravity. Within loop quantum gravity, we understand the microstructure of space very well. However, we do not yet understand how quantum space evolves and becomes quantum space-time. And it is this problem which has occupied almost all my attention during my career. The approach that I take is a discrete approach to quantum gravity. We take space-time to be discrete, that events, so if I take an event here in space-time and another event here which follows this event, we understand the meaning of follow. Between those two events, there's only a finite number of space-time events that are there. This discreteness is at the heart of what's called the causal set approach to quantum gravity. But it's also based on a very important physical principle, and that is the principle of causality. So over the years, I have uh, developed a particular style of working, where I use mathematics to look at analogies between different parts of physics and exploit them to understand both of them. So when I joined here, the first piece of work I did was to explore with a colleague of mine an analogy between magnetic fields in physics and rotations. In the theory of magnetism, there's an idea called a magnetic monopole. It turns out if you believe in magnetic monopoles, you can explain the quantization of charge. So we asked the question whether there's a gravitational analog for the magnetic monopole. And we pursued that using the idea of dimensional reduction. And that actually was quite a revealing thing to me that you could pursue a physical analogy, convert it to mathematics, and learn something new about the world. Our research interest lies in understanding Brownian motion in the low temperature domain. So the question is that what happens when you take a Brownian particle and scale it down and lower the temperature and come to a point when it's no longer dominated by thermal fluctuations and it is very close to absolute zero where it is tossed around by what is called zero point fluctuations of quantum origin. When I was just a beginner as my PhD student, then the thing that fascinated me is that something is probabilistic is going on. Maybe I don't know exactly what is going to happen, but there is a probabilistic approach of getting that. Even in kind of Brownian motion, we also cannot think what can be the exact position of a particle at a particular time. But we can definitely formulate an equation of motion. Using that equation, we can give some probabilistic approach why the position of this particle is this at that time. We don't know exactly, but still we can predict most correctly. One of the exciting aspects of this uh, domain of theoretical physics is that it has a very nice interface with experiments. Experiments have a very saning effect on a field. Fields in which the experiments are driving theory tend to be healthier fields where there is less uh, sociology and less fashion and more substance. So I think it's a very special quality of Raman Research Institute that there are so many experimental labs. Theorists have, are really privileged to have so many experimentalists around. 
I have colleagues at Raman Research Institute in the Cold Atom Experimental Lab and we have collaborative project going on. Some of our preliminary predictions which were done have been tested and uh, that's really a very exciting to be able to interface with experimentalists. As a theorist, that's very satisfying. I have been doing collaboration with experimental physicists here and I have also actually done experiments together with experimentalists from uh, this theoretical physics to the soft condensed matter physics. And then there are common interests between this group and the astronomy and astrophysics, so they are all I mean, connected in some sense. Yeah. I have had collaborations abroad and uh, also with people in other institutes, but I felt that some of the experimental collaborations in, in RRI were the most fruitful in the sense that they broadened me in a, in a certain way. I've also mentored a lot of students, even not just those in India, but also while they were writing their thesis, I mean basically working on their thesis work um, in Europe. Here I have had two PhD students, um, both of them defended successfully and I have currently three master's students, very, very, very smart, very accomplished master's students and they will move on to other things but in the process it's also very, it's a lot of fun because you're talking to somebody younger, you're exploring things with them. Um, I find that uh, very satisfying as well. What I have valued the most about my stay over here at the Raman Research Institute all these years is that it has really given me time to think and spend on really deep and hard problems. Curiosity driven science is not just something imposed or told to us by somebody else. I think it's very fundamental to human nature. We think of greed as fundamental to human nature but I would say that this is in fact this overcomes greed. The need to know, the, the curiosity that we have is what leads us to ask questions. And that's the basis upon which science is founded. How does it matter to you if there is a black hole at the center of our galaxy or the center of a faraway galaxy? How does it matter? I will argue that it matters because it changes the way you view the universe. And that's very fundamental to us. We're taught that this is all, you know, not relevant. But I think this is fundamental to human nature. And that's a message I want to put out there.